In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to St. Paul Servant Preparation Course. Today we have a second talk about the Coptic Church history. We're going to learn about different types and stages of persecution that the Church went through. So let's get started. Church history part two, the persecution of the church. The objective that we will cover for today to introduce the different type of persecution, to state the martyrdom of the disciple, they recognize the famous three stages of Roman persecution and to realize the martyrdom in different and current times. Then I read part here from the uh, Gospel of St. Matthew that Jesus warning to his disciple, but be aware of men for they will deliver you up to council and scourge you in their synagogue. You will be brought before governor and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentile. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you shall speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speak in you. Matthew 10, 17 to 20. This Jesus warning to his disciple about the coming persecution that they're gonna suffer. First, we're gonna explore the different type of persecution of the Christian. First, there was a Jewish persecution against the disciple and the believers. Second was the idol worshiper persecution and that took place all over the world. Third, the Christian persecution when some Christian persecuted another group of Christian as it happened with the Catholic church persecuted the Coptic church in Egypt in the 5th and 6th century, and the Catholic Church also persecuted the Protestant Church in Europe around 16th and 17th century. Stage 4 is the Arab persecution, which started from the 7th century till present time, and persecution in the 21st century. We start first by the Jewish persecution. The Jewish arrested St. Peter and St. John after healing the lame men. They also arrested and flogged the disciple. St. James the Great, the son of Zebedee, was martyred by the sword around 44 AD. St. James the Less, who was Jesus' cousin, also became the Bishop of Jerusalem, was martyred in Jerusalem around 63 AD. St. Simon Clopas, who also became the Bishop of Jerusalem, was martyred around 107 AD. So you see the three Bishops of Jerusalem, all of them end up in martyrdom at the hand of the Jewish. This is a picture of St. James the Great and St. James the Less. Second, we're gonna uh, state the martyrdom of the disciple, how the disciple ended the life. Okay, so we start by St. Andrew. He was crucified between two trees in Greece around 6 AD. St. Peter crucified upside down in Rome around 6, 7 AD. St. James the Great beheaded in Jerusalem around 44 AD. St. John the Beloved died of old age around 100 AD. He's the only exception. Maybe because he got the blessing of taking care of St. Mary. St. Philip was crucified in Turkey. St. Barcelomo or Nathaniel was skinned alive, then beheaded in Armenia. St. Matthew was stabbed in the back by the sword in Ethiopia. St. Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India around 72 AD. This is some example of the martyrdom of the disciple, St. Andrew, St. Peter, St. John, St. James, and St. Uh, Thomas. St. James the Less was stoned and clubbed in Jerusalem around 63 AD. Simon the Zealot was martyred with a sword in Persia or Iran around 65 AD. St. Jude or Thaddeus was killed by the axe in Iran around 67 AD. St. Messias was stoned and then beheaded in Jerusalem. St. Paul was killed by the sword around 67 AD. St. Timothy was beaten and dragged into the street and stoned when he was around 80 years old. So now we notice St. Messias was chosen instead of Judas and St. Timothy was one of St. Paul's disciples. They also became martyr. This is a picture of St. Paul martyrdom in Rome around 67 AD. Now we have to take a, a close look at the meaning of the martyrdom of the disciple. It basically means that all of them ended up their life with martyrdom as a proof of their strong belief in Jesus Christ and what happened to him. The strong belief in Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection. 
they wouldn't put their neck or their life on the edge unless they are 100% sure that Jesus really died on a cross and resurrected and he is a king to come in the kingdom of heaven. They will never give up their life for fake stories. Unless they are 100% confident Jesus' divinity and his kingdom in heaven, they will not accept to die as martyr. And we honor them in many different ways by portraying their icon, the church, naming the altar, the church, and even our children after them. So we honor all the martyrs. Here is a small quiz for you. This is a map, and you have to figure out where St. Thomas, Matthew, Jude, and Simon the Zealot were martyred. This is a bigger map for other disciples who went outside Jerusalem and been martyred. Nathaniel, Philip, Andrew, Peter, Paul, and James, you have to match their name to the location or the country where they martyred. Next, we want to talk about the famous three stages of Roman persecution. First of all, you have to know that there are 10 Roman emperors who harshly persecuted the Christian. Many of the Roman emperors pursued Christian, but those 10 are harshly persecuted them. Persecution started in Rome and spread to the entire emperor. So it's not basically located to Rome, it went through the entire emperor. And the persecution was actually interrupted by time of peace. So the church could tolerate. So what I mean is that 10 emperors were not right one after another. They were a peace time or a grace time of tolerance before a second emperor come and start persecuting the Christian again. Now, they have to make some uh, legitimate cause for this persecution. Here are some of the causes that they made up. First of all, they claim that the idol gods are very upset because the Roman emperors allow the Christian to live among them. So the gods are upset because we let the Christian live. The Christians are to blame for any war that they lose or any natural disaster, famine, flood, plague, earthquake, any disaster happen, or the gods are angry or the heaven is angry because we let the Christian live. The Christian used to practice underground because they couldn't afford to have a church above the ground. So they chosen to be a secret cult and they plan to overthrow the empire. And finally, the Jewish conspiracy against the Christian played a good role with the emperors. A lot of the Jewish counselor uh, reached out to the emperors and put some bad words on behalf of the Christian, and that was a cause of persecution. So we're gonna go through them one by one. Here is the first one, Nero, uh, from 54 to 68 AD. He was a very erratic person, killed his mother and his wife, burned the city of Rome for nine days and blamed the Christian for it. He killed thousands and thousands of Christians all over his empire. He actually, uh, to torture them harshly, he dressed them in shirt made of wax and fixed them in a trees in his garden and set them up on fire. So they become a torches that light up his garden. This is a picture of him. This is his statues and that's what could look like him. He burned down Rome, which was the capital of the Roman Empire and offered many Christian for torture and martyrdom. As I mentioned, he was a very erratic person, so he used to act in a very bizarre way. Uh, at night, he would dress casually and go to bars and start to drink and dance. Some people saw him singing up in a theater as a regular singer, and sometimes he would go up in a race, horse racing, like the average person. Didn't act as a, a king or an emperor. He actually put St. Paul to trial twice. Uh, the first time St. Paul was set free because there was a Jewish accusation against him, but the second time he put him for this. Temple actually referred to his first trial in the second epistle to Timothy, chapter four, when he said, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. The Lord is faithful, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentile might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So he referred to Nero as the lion. The second uh, time he was tried before uh, Nero, he was sent for execution by the sword. And he also, uh, Nero ordered the execution of uh, St. Peter or his crucifixion. This is a picture of St. Peter and St. Paul martyrdom. St. Peter, as I mentioned, crucified upside down and St. Paul was executed by the sword. 
Next one is Domitian. He killed his brother and he killed many of the Roman senators and took over their land and farm with a very greedy emperor. He ordered the Christian to be killed and took over their possessions. During his, uh, his reign, St. John the Beloved was uh, boiled in hot oil, then sent to exile at Pontus. St. Timothy also died during his reign. So the picture of St. John the Beloved who was ordered to be in hot boiling oil as a source of torture. But God saved him when he survived the emperor ordered him to go to Patmos for exile. Number three is Trajan from 98 to 117. He killed thousands and thousands of Christians daily. He officially declared war against Christianity. In his time, St. Ignatius was martyr. St. Ignatius actually was a disciple of St. John the Beloved, and he was the bishop of Antioch in Syria. And interestingly, he was the child that Jesus uh, brought back to the disciple and said, if you don't come back and be like this, a child, you will not enter into kingdom of heaven. That little child that Jesus took in his lap and talk about him to the disciple, if you don't come back and live as a child, you will not enter kingdom of heaven. He sent Ignatius who lived and be martyred during Trajan time. Four, Marcus Aurelius Antonius, 138 to 180, we are now in the second century. Pursued the Christian out of fear, they would destroy the state. He martyred St. Polycarp of Smyrna. He was also was a disciple of St. John the Beloved, and he was the Bishop of Smyrna. And uh, the emperor, during the trial, he tried to reproach him and convince him to uh, deny Christ. And he told him, reproach Christ and I will release you. But Polycarp answered, said, 86 years I have served him, and he never once wronged me. How then shall I blaspheme my king who shall save me? So he went down for martyrdom. Interestingly, when you read the book of Revelation, chapter 2, it was sent to the bishop of Smyrna, and most likely that was sent Polycarp. And it was said to him, be faithful unto the death, I will give you the crown of life. And truly he was faithful to this, and he got the crown of the eternal life. Number five is Severus from 193 till 211. And he feared the alarming growth of Christianity. Keep in mind that although there were so many Christians were martyred, but more of idol worship were converting to Christianity. So the overall number of Christians was growing and growing. Uh, Arianus, the Bishop of Lyon and disciple of St. Polycarp, was also buried in his time. The persecution of origin, the great teacher Alexandria happened in his time. Tertullian, the great teacher in Europe, also lived during the time and he documented the severe persecution against Christians. This is a, a picture of St. Arianus, the Bishop of Lyons. He preached in South France, he fought many heresies, and he defended the Orthodox faith. Next is Maximus from 235 to 238. He focused his preaching against the clergy, so basically he was all the persecution was against the clergy. He planned to exterminate all the Christian. Uh, so many uh, Christian were slain without even trial. And they were buried in big heaps. Maybe they dumped like 50, 60 Christian body in one pit. This year, from 249 to 251. And he also, like the other, he feared the growth of Christianity and the emptiness of his in temple because a lot of the other worship forsake their temple and went to worship God and become Christian. So some Christian actually will suffer so much in his time, they bow down and uh, worship the false God or uh, some decanted the Christ under severe persecution. Interestingly, in his time, we have St. George, the great St. George of our church was tortured and martyred during his reign. St. George actually is venerated in so many churches in Egypt, of course, England, Rome, Greek, and Russia. Number eight is Valerian from 253 to 260. He, uh, he uh, authorized extreme and severe persecution against the empire that did not spare women or children. He was so uh, vicious emperor. And his time, St. Cybran, the bishop of Carthage, was also martyred. St. Uh, Cybran is the bishop of Carthage. He was born around 200 AD at uh, Carthage in Tunisia, North Africa. 
and he departed or martyred in September 14, 258. The Western and Eastern uh, celebrate him and his feast day in September 16. Number nine is Aurelian from 270 to 275, now in the third century, who is a victorious military leader against the barbarian and German and the French, and united the Roman Empire. Uh, but unfortunately, he imposed the sun as a single god to his citizen, and they were forced to uh, worship and believe in this god against their own belief. He requested also to be hailed as a Dominus Edius, which means master and god. So not just really worshiping sun, but worship me. I'm the master and I am the god. That's Aurelian 270 to 275. The last one and the uh, most vicious one is Diocletian from 284 to 304. He was the worst uh, of all. He issued four decrees to persecute the Christian. The first decree of the church should be destroyed, sacred scripture and picture should be burned. Any Christian of position should lose their honor and those of lower rank should lose their liberty, which means become slave. So that's a, a severe persecution against the church, against the leader, and against the average citizen. Second, Edith was leader of the Christian are to be put or thrown to prison. So now he focused on the bishop of the church. The third edict was a Christian leader who would not sacrifice to idol, should be thrown into prison, and they suffer cruel tortures. The fourth one, that all Christian everywhere in the kingdom should sacrifice to the idol, Will be put to death in a big war of extermination. And that was the heaviest and the strongest war of uh, persecution against Christians. In 305, the Christian got severely ill and he abdicated the throne and was replaced by Galerius, his successor, assistant successor, also uh, continued the persecution in the east part of the empire. However, on uh, February 23 to 311, the Emperor Glacius uh, actually issued the Edict of Toleration, which granted the forgiveness to the Christian and freedom to worship and the status of religious, uh, which means recognizing Christian as a religion in the Roman Empire. So 10 vicious Roman emperors, luckily they didn't uh, come one after another. There was a grace period between them, a space period, period of uh, peace and tolerance, then a second one will come. But they all passed by and finally came the Edict of Toleration. The Coptic Church actually to acknowledge the terrible persecution during the last Emperor Diocletian, she decided to make the year of his enthronement, 284 is the beginning of its Coptic calendar year. So to calculate the Coptic calendar year, just put the current Julian year minus 284, you will come the Coptic year of the martyr. So the Christian became a big landmark in the Coptic Church history, and his enthronement began the beginning of the Coptic Church. We covered the different type of persecution, the uh, martyrdom of the disciple, the 10 famous stages of Roman persecution, and lastly, we're going to the uh, martyrdom in current times, because martyrdom actually didn't end. Persecution is still going on, and it can keep going on until the last days. It will never stop as the devil is at work, as you said, in the parable of the wheat and terrace, the terrace will grow next to the wheat. The terrace means the devil. The uh, evil people will keep growing in the world next to the righteous people. In the book of Revelation, it was mentioned that in the last day that they will be losing to inflict more harm on the church. So persecution happened all over the world at different levels. I'm just going to show some example of uh, persecution against Christ and Christian all over the world. So this Nigeria, where they burn down churches, homes, this Kenya, in Africa. In Nigeria, they kidnap girls, uh, force them to convert to Islam. In Pakistan, they burn people alive and burn Christian homes and churches. This is the burning down of the Coptic Church in Canada. This Coptic Church in Florida. And finally, and most notably, the martyrs, the Coptic martyrs in Libya. But really what comforts us is what St. John saw under the altar. 
he said in the Revelation chapter 6, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on earth? Then a white robe was given to each one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servant and their brethren would be killed as they were was completed. So everyone who has been martyred is remembered before God. Everyone who has been persecuted is remembered before God. St. John showed them as living souls under the altar. And they screaming to God, when are you going to take revenge for us? And they said, everyone has to wear that white robe, a symbol of righteousness, a symbol of purity, until your fellow servant, until your fellow brother, fellow Christian, suffer on earth and complete their turn on life, then you're all going to be celebrating with Christ in his kingdom. Finally, I have to remind you by Jesus' promise, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. This was an intense lecture. We cover so much about the persecution that the church suffered all over these years. First, we uh, realized the different type and stages of the Christian persecution. Second, we stated the martyrdom of the disciple. Third, we recognized the 10 famous Roman emperors. And fourth, we realized the martyrdom in the current time. Finally, I leave you with a memorization verses. As St. Paul said to the Philippian while he was in jail, for I'm hard pressed between the two, two choices, having desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, or dwell among you. And he preferred to depart with Christ, but God gave him a chance to live, to keep preaching to the Philippian and the other people as well. And uh, also from St. Paul, Epistle to the Roman, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we were killed all day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Roman 8, 35, 36. Thank you very much for your attendance. I see you next time, another lecture in the church history, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.